All right, good morning. Good morning, so glad to be here. So hopefully you were able to join us this Sunday morning. And what I realized is that Sunday morning apparently is the time for mowing lawns here in my neighborhood. So it may get a little bit loud in here because the lawn mowers are going. <laughs> so I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, a few minutes ago, I thought something was like blowing up in my house just because it was so loud. You know, it was like, is there some sort of a speaker on? Is there some sort of overload uh, happening? But uh, nope, we're all here. So hopefully you can hear me and you can see me and uh, that's all running well. I don't know that personally, but I do hope that things are running the way that they're supposed to. So I'm just going to check this in a couple of places. Yep. There goes. Nope. That's just someone driving. Nope. That is definitely a lawnmower. So it's pretty loud um, in my in my headset. So I hope that the sound does not translate over to uh, the video. So I'm going to just adjust the microphone. Oop, nope. You can't adjust it that way. <laughs> so the um, um, I adjusted the microphone just a little bit too much <laughs> and pulled out my my headset. So I am just uh, checking this in a couple of places to see if this video is actually running. So bear with me. Um, if you can hear me and see me, it'd be great if you posted in the chat. Oh, there we go. So it's just a massive delay. <laughs> so it's up. So Trish says, good morning. Hope your back is feeling better. So for those who uh, who don't know, so I posted last night in the Designers and Makers Quilting Academy, and uh, that was about all that I could get to uh, last night. So I yesterday. So here's here's the thing. My life right now is so busy that I go to work, <laughs> I go to the studio, I make quilts, I write tutorials, I take pictures, I do all of these things. And the thing that doesn't get done is me um, eating. <laughs> you know, if I do eat, it's definitely not something healthy. I can't tell you the last time I cooked something to uh, to eat. It's been mostly takeout or you know things from the grocery store deli or fast food, and it's definitely showed. And with that, there's. Um, just, uh, you know, you deal with thargic and tired and, you know, low energy and of course the weight gain. And so I don't know if you have noticed, but I've definitely noticed that I am a lot heavier than I was at this time last year. So, so I thought I, you know, I had the opportunity yesterday to go to this place called Bears Fit, which is a collaboration with, uh, between like the uh, health, um, I don't know the, the name of the actual um, fitness company, but it's a collaboration between the fitness company and the Chicago Bears, and they have this state-of-the-art facility. And I'm part of a Facebook community leaders program. Sorry, I'm just adjusting, <laughs> adjusting myself here so I can just sit a little more comfortably. So I'm part of this Facebook community leadership program, and it's for... And it's actually, um, the, the group that I'm in is based in Chicago, so it's local community leaders who get together and we have meetups and things like that. So this particular meetup was focused on self-care, self and that's something that I have been really terrible at, so I don't know how you are <laughs> with it, but I've definitely noticed that I have not been taking care of myself. So I saw it as an opportunity to, to get out and sort of, you know, re-kick off this whole self-care uh, journey, which obviously has impacts to, you know, lots of things. It's like if you don't take care of your health, then you can't do the things that you want to do, and eventually it takes its toll, right? So I go and do this, and we start out, and they started us out um, just with some stretches. So, uh, so that was fine, and we're on this kind of turf area 
you know, stretching and, you know, and it's fine. We're just, you know, walking down the turf and stretching, you know, various parts. So that was good. Um, we did, you know, 10 minutes maybe on the treadmill, not, you know, and it wasn't a run. It was just, you know, it was kind of a brisk walk, slight incline, no problem, right? I mean, I'm feeling it in my calves, you know, because, you know, and then we do a little bit more stretching and, and, uh, you know, so it's great. So it's great little, you know, cardio routine, no problem. So that was fine. Then I go to yoga, <laughs> yoga, which is supposed to be, and I know that yoga is not like, um, you like, I don't know. I do have this perception that yoga is kind of this like very relaxed, non intense, you know, kind of thing. You're just stretching, right? How hard can stretching be? Well, apparently stretching can be um, really hard and my um, body is uh, not liking this whole stretching thing. So, uh, so I was laying down, I was on my belly and you're supposed to lay down on your belly and put one of your cheeks to the side, you know, so you turn your cheek and then you put your hands behind your back and you, you clasp your hands together and then you, you raise your head and raise your arms. And I did that move and I literally shrieked when my back went into a spasm. So I am laid out on the floor, just kind of writhing in pain, trying to get my back you know, to calm down. And so the yoga instructor comes over and she's trying to like calm, you know, the area and I'm just on the floor and I'm like, it's embarrassing. And other, you know, other people are just, and she's still giving them instructions on like what to do next, but I am just down on the floor not sure how I'm going to get back up, but eventually we got the spasm to calm down. And this place, I said it's state of the art. So they have these, these water, these like water massage things. And so it's like this chair that you sit in and it's like a full, it, it's this, it's almost like a water bed and it shoots these little water jets. And so I got in there and was able to have a little bit of time to you know, get that area lightly massaged um, to get it to calm down. And it's a little bit, a little bit heated. So, um, so that was all comfortable. So this morning, I'm just trying to take it easy. I can still feel like where my back is. Um, and this happened in um, like below the lower back, kind of like in the hip area. So you still have um, like muscles down there that connect to your spine and all of that. So that's really aggravated. And then I can also feel it a little bit higher um, in my back. So I'm a little bit stiff this morning. And so I'm going to need to be, I'm going to need to stretch some more, but maybe I won't do that move on the floor. So, um, so if any of you are in yoga, <laughs> I appreciate the things that you do because, um, it was actually the yoga that, that took me out. So I'm just taking it a little bit easy this morning, trying to, um, sit up straight and also trying not to baby the, the back because one thing I've noticed is that if you tense up, um, you know, if you, if you try to be protective of a, of an area that's hurting, if you tense up in other places, then, um, you just kind of cause more issues. So I'm going to try not to do that, but in any event, you know, I want to continue on this, um, health journey. So, uh, but one of the things I need to do is try to find time or make time because you can't find time. Time is time, right? <laughs> it's the only thing you have. So I need to make time to shop for nutritious food. I need to make time to cook and make meals and, and do all those things and stretch and exercise. So that is what I need to get, uh, I need to get going on. So today I am, I want to be really careful about the kind of the, the movement <laughs> that I do today. So we'll see if I can do a little bit of sewing. I did notice that today I, I did bring the orange peel for the curved piecing. What I didn't bring is the right kind of pins um, to, or the pins that I prefer. So I, I do have some, some pins here. Let me see if I actually have um, even if, so the pins that I have, that I have are, oh God, I don't know if I can reach that. Okay. Maybe <laughs> if I don't look at it. So the pins that I have with me, um, are these, um, actually these, these flower, I've got a couple of these. And then I also have these really thick 
um, corsage pins, which are really super cute, but don't really do much for um, pinning for curved piecing. I also recognize, oh, look at that. I do have some pins. So these aren't my favorite pins, but they are some pins. And so I can show you the pinning for the curved piecing at the very least. Um, what I am, what I want to be careful about is just the, the turning and the rotation and the, the reaching for the iron. And actually, I, I didn't even plug the, the iron in because I didn't expect that I would be able to do that. But the, the iron is a little bit of a reach and it's a little bit heavy. And it's not heavy in the sense that um, it's actually a heavy iron, but just the, the reaching over and the grabbing it and trying to bring it back over. I don't know if that's something that I want to attempt to do this morning. So we'll just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of leave that alone. But if you are in the Emma Mystery class, there are plenty of pictures on the, on the, the in the classroom that you can look at that kind of shows you my pinning method and technique for pressing. So we'll just, we'll see how, you know, how far we get today. So I don't want to overdo it. Um, I also don't want to, and I apologize for just the spastic kind of moves here. I'm trying to make sure that I don't tense up in any specific area and I'm kind of getting, you know, I'm getting little, little tendrils of pain kind of shooting through my back. So it's a little bit uncomfortable. So um, so I'll try not to be <laughs> too spastic this morning um, and, uh, and try to stay in the camera um, frame. But just so you know that why I'm doing all of this kind of weird movement is just to change the position of my, my back and get into a more comfortable place. So, and then I need to take some ibuprofen, which I should have done that this morning as soon as I got up and I did not. <laughs> so I still need to do that. Awesome. So hopefully you are doing well this morning. Hopefully you got to see week three of Emma and you've got your curve piecing at least started. I don't want to say done, but, uh, but, uh, you know, when I posted last night in the group, there are a couple of folks who commented. So Erin said that she threw her back out at Easter brunch and uh, regular life is dangerous for backs, apparently. So and that is so true. It's like you can be doing the most mundane things. I, I can't tell you how many times I have thrown out my um, my uh, shoulder or got my shoulder into a spasm just from combing my hair in the shower. So you can you can definitely do that. So. I did want to ask who has gotten, who ordered a quilty box? Did you get your quilty box? I still have to pick mine up so that I can do the unboxing and show you guys what's in it. I'm so excited. So one of the things that I didn't want to do was pick it up too early and then nobody had their quilty box and then I couldn't unbox it because it's really kind of rude, I think, to um, you know have something that's like a surprise and then you spoil the surprise before people get a chance to kind of have their own surprise. And that's kind of how you know, how mystery quilts are to a certain extent, right? You have to, even though you may be the first in and really excited to share, you do want to be a little bit mindful of other people um, without sort of, um, and, and I don't know where the line is, right? So when you think about a, a, cause I see this in my Facebook feed all the time, especially when Game of Thrones was running, right? People would go, you know, okay, Game of Thrones is airing tonight. And then someone else would go, I haven't had a chance to see it. So don't post any spoilers until I get to watch it. Right? So there's this, this sense of, on one hand, you don't want to spoil the experience for someone else, but then how long is too long to wait for someone else? You know, when does that start interfering with your ability or desire to, uh, you know, to express what you've seen or what you've been able to um, to do? So I think with with us um, in the mystery quilt, I'm actually surprised this time around because usually in other mystery quilts it's been like if I post the block at like nine o'clock by like 9 40 <laughs> someone has finished all their blocks and they've posted their pictures and that hasn't happened this time so I think that has given people kind of more of an opportunity to to um you know get to the block and at least see it I think that's the thing is if you've had a chance to see it maybe you haven't had a chance to sew it 
but if you've at least had a chance to see it, then it's not a spoiler if someone has posted a picture. But I don't know where that line is for us and what we're doing, but uh, do you guys hear all of that racket <laughs> from the, uh, and maybe it's, uh, hopefully it's not my lawn that's getting this treatment because I would feel pretty bad about complaining about my, um, my lawn guy mowing my lawn, <laughs> you know, what I'm trying to do, do videos. So I'm going to um, pause for a second and I think, and what's, what's really tough is that when I take a pause to look for questions or comments, I think the feed is running, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds or a minute behind. So when I look at the video online, you know, I'll say stop and then it'll be a minute from now that you'll hear me say, <laughs> you know, I'm going to stop and look for questions. So, um, so that's going to be interesting to try to get used to on here. So, all right. So what we're going to do is I am going to pause for a second and this may not impact you, but feel free to post questions or comments at any point in time, you know, let me know, what did you think of the block this week? Um, are you having any challenges? Is there, uh-oh. Okay, oh, I so, <laughs> it was so weird. <laughs> All right, no, let's do this. All right, so somewhere, sorry, I had an extra window open and then I don't know if you were hearing it, but I heard myself <laughs> talking in this other video. This is so weird. I have too many windows open. I need to cut that out. But I'm going to take a second and just see if there are any questions in the group. Oh, look. So Janet, um, she posted, she said, no sewing for me this weekend. Short vacation in Vegas, lunch at Hell's Kitchen, and she saw the season 17 winner, Jennifer. That's so fantastic. So that's great to kind of get out and uh, and do something. So, and then uh, Kate, uh, Kate also posted, Kate and Karen posted, you know, basically feel better, you know, sympathizing with my back spasm uh, issues. So awesome. So I'm not seeing any other questions in here so um yeah and i'm not seeing anything over here but uh thanks for the well wishes on feeling better i appreciate that so much and all right so i have located my pieces so remember i'm doing a solids version of emma that kind of i think this one coordinates with the uh with heart field so uh so but i've just kind of chosen solid color so for this block i have a like a tan a solid and a, a blue <laughs> and for those of you who i think um do, oh look i still have my box from last week so for those of you who have my my orange peel acrylic template uh, sets you need both the melon uh, you need both the melon and the arch this week and of course if you have the die this is the same the Sizzix die oh my god that's heavy <laughs> everything's so heavy this morning oh gosh I can really feel it in my back so uh, this is the the orange peel um, die so it's got two arches and the melon and uh, so you can use use that as well and there's also paper templates inside of the pattern itself so what i when you get that so the t the acrylic templates don't have matching notches at the center whereas the anyone who got a die cut unit um, it has notches and also my Sizzix die does not have the notches on it. So the reason these shapes have notches is I had a custom studio die made. This was before the, the, the idea came to say, Hey, why don't I do a Sizzix die, um, with this? So the, uh, and the Sizzix, the Sizzix dies, they typically do not notch their, their curved units. And so my die does not have notches of the curved units. But if you are cutting your your melons or your arches, even though they don't have a center, you just all you need to do is just fold it in half and lightly press 
where there is a center. And I'm gonna swap over to the other camera in a second so that you can see me pen. So I do not have my favorite pins with me, but I do have this um, small, this set of pins. These are just metal pins. They are um, headless pins. I don't know if you, if you, if they're actually called headless pins, but I call them headless pins just because they just have the, you know, the, you know, there's not a fancy head on them like the flower head pins or the hearts that I have. So they're just regular um, pins. But the ones that I typically like for this is glass head pins. But what I recommend is that you use when you are pinning curves, you use the thinnest, smallest pins that you have. So. I think the quilting pins to me are too large for this. They're too long. I think the diameter of the pin is fine, but they're too long to uh, to use for this um, for this exercise. So I'm going to take that and actually let me switch over to the other camera and take a look at which camera is going to show. Um, here. Oh my goodness, what on earth are they cutting? All right, let's switch over to this camera. So this is my, this is my camera that is over the, uh, or faces the, the pressing station. I really want to understand what they are cutting because that, the, whatever lawnmower that is, it just sounds like a, it's, having a field day and it's either my yard or the one next door. I don't think it's my yard. I think when I looked yesterday, my yard was pretty was pretty okay. So I think it is next door, but they are super loud. Okay. So I'm taking both units and I know that mine has notches, but if yours doesn't, I'm just showing you how to find the center. So I've found the center. I've pressed it, I finger pressed it, and you can kind of see that finger pressing staying in place. And so then I'll just take that and line that up with the pin on, and you could do finger presses on both units, but I, I like to, typically what I'll do is I'll have two, I'll, you know, fold all the units, all the melons and mark them with a pin, and then I'll come back and fold an arch at a time and pin the centers together. So this is how, this starts. So I've got the centers marked and the two units are pinned together. And you can see that the arch is extending above the melon. So this is, um, you know, what we're trying to do is ultimately, ah, 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 that was not a smart way to turn. Okay, so this is what the piece the piece is going to attach this way, right? So if I look at this, I'm trying to get this piece here. And so when I, you know, the reason it comes up with this shape is that if I fold this right sides together, that's what that will look like, right? So that's how I come to the conclusion that this is the direction that they're pinned. You also want them to be right sides together and of course, my solids don't necessarily have a right side or a wrong side. They do, but I don't really care <laughs> to figure out which one is right or wrong side. It doesn't really matter that much uh, in the finished product. So, uh, but if you have a uh, commercial print, of course, that does make a difference. So when you are folding these right sides together, this is the direction that your arch is going to face. The next thing that I do is is a little bit unconventional. So what has to happen is that you're trying to get this curve on the arch to match this curve on the melon. And so we have to sort of stretch this piece to match this piece. So what I do first, and this is on this curve is on the bias so one thing that i do that i like to do is sort of pre-stretch that unit so i just take take the piece and pull it so i hold the center and i pull just the arch tail and i do the same thing on the other side and just pull it so i'm kind of pre 
stretching it. This is not something you want to do on triangles or any other bias unit that you're trying to put together. But I just want to make this easing a little bit easier to do. And so I just pre stretch that unit. The next thing I need to do is pin the ends together. So this can be a little bit hard to, to kind of recognize, but I need to pin this so that the two edges meet. So the straight edge for this is not on the same side as my melon. See, if I pin it that way, it's going to it's going to twist. So I need this to match up this way and I'm going to lay this down in a second and you will see. But I'm going to pin this here. Now you've probably seen me have videos where I piece curves without pins. And that is something that I typically do for Drunkard's Path and uh, Double Wedding Ring and Rob Peter to Pay Paul. Usually I will do those without pins. The one thing about the melons and the reason I use pins for the melons is number one, I have a very narrow you know, this piece is a half inch wide. So I have a very narrow arch and I just like this to be more precise than the Drunkard's Path units. And it's just the length of this curve just makes me a little bit nervous about piecing it without pins. And so I tend to piece Drunkard's Path without pins and the melons I pin the heck out of. So it's just a preference. If you wanna stitch these without pins, you are certainly welcome to do so. The same concept applies when you get to the center. If your center is not matched, then the rest of your unit's not gonna match. So if you get to the center and it's not matched, you're probably better off stopping than you know continuing to go. But it's something that you practice and you get used to, and I just haven't been practicing it. So, so here's the, the end of this. So I'm gonna turn this around. So you can see that this is matched up with the edge of my melon. And then the other piece that I like to do just to make sure that this stays put and it's squared with the edge is I'll put another pin going in the opposite direction. There, so I've got one pin on my sewing edge and then this pin is on the non-sewing edge and I'm just pinning it there because I want this edge to stay perfectly square, okay? So then as I work with this, because my edge is pre-stretched, it sort of matches a little bit better than it would have if I had not done that. And so I am going to pin Usually what I do is I'll try to kind of pin, try to kind of, I'll try to pin the centers, but I'm gonna work with this a little bit and I'm pinning, you know, maybe a half inch, five eighths of an inch apart. So I just put a couple of pins, you know, tw working toward the center to get this to lay down a little bit more so that I can actually see where the, you know, where the center is and I have kind of less, you know, less work to do. So. Um, so basically what I've done is, you know, these two are apart and I'm just working these two together and pushing it down to find the center and pin it. So it's just a way of easing the pieces together without forcing it. And when you do that pre-stretch, it's a little bit easier to see, you know, where do these two pieces meet? So I put a pin in the center and now I'm just working my way to, you know, toward the center and pinning those down. So, you know, so I'll get probably two more pins in here. Okay, so, and then one more. So you can kind of see you end up with quite a few pins in here. And you don't have to pin this much if you don't want to, but I find that I am a little bit, it, it helps me to be more accurate when I have the pins holding down the place that it's supposed to be easing rather than trying to ease that later. So, you know, this, and if it looks like they're coming together and not needing as many pins, you can see I pinned that one a little bit further apart, but 
that's because it's not giving me problems in there. And the reason you want to use kind of smaller pins, so not only shorter pins, but pins with a smaller diameter, is you want to reduce the distortion that happens, you know, when you pin. And even with the pins, I try not to, I'm not using the full length of the pin. I really just try to grab just a little bit of the, I'll turn this around so you can see, but I'm just grabbing just a little bit of the fabric. I'm not using the whole pin. I'm just grabbing enough to be able to do this. And I find that, you know, when I use longer pins, uh, they just get in the way because they're leaning toward each other and, you know, just kind of causing problems. So, all right, so I've got that in pinned and I'm gonna come in and do the other side as well. So matching up to make sure that end is square pinning it this direction so my first pin is probably a half inch from the end and then my next pin is pinned opposite in the opposite direction to hold the corner square so this pin is holding this piece in place so the corner is square and this pin is holding these two pieces together for sewing okay so again this is you know, I'm not getting a real good uh, sense of you know where this is, so I'm just going to take a couple of pins and pin toward the center. Okay, I got a little bit of fuzz here, and then on this side, I am again pinning a little bit toward the center, and then you can see that this takes up you know quite a few pins. So you might run out of pins, <laughs> you know, and then you have to sew in order to uh, to get the uh, you know get your pins back so you can continue pinning so you may only get I think with my number of pins I can get probably four units pinned before I just have to start sewing and it is good to alternate those and take you know take breaks and and alternate the things that you're doing and certainly you know like my sewing station here it, here in the video studio is quite compact I have the cutting station is here the you know, or the cutting stations here the pressing station is on tap the sewing machine is here and the iron is just I know you can't see my hand reading but the iron is behind the the sewing machine um, here so it's a little bit it's not a super reach on a normal daily basis but I think you know I am within you know three square feet <laughs> I have everything that I need but when you are sewing especially for a long period of time so speaking of stretching and exercising those types of things you know quilting can sometimes be I should say yeah, quilting and piecing can be a little bit sedentary in the sense that you are just sitting in one spot and feeding pieces into the machine and while chain stitching is super fun you know it can be very repetitive and kind of keep your body in a position in a single position for a long period of time so what I like to do in my regular studio is my pressing station is a stand-up pressing station so when I and my cutting station is also a larger unit that I have to stand up to cut at and so or to, to press and so I will chain piece for a little bit and then I'll get up and iron you know or I'll get up and I'll cut so it's I try not to do the same thing for too long of a period of time um, because you can um, kind of you know kind of fix your body um, in that position and oh my god what on earth are they cutting I really want to go outside and see like what kind of um, what kind of work they are doing out there because it is just um, it doesn't even sound like a lawnmower it sounds um, you know even if it's a weed whacker I don't know I don't know what they're doing it just it sounds really loud and it might not be that loud outside but in my headset it's super loud so I closed my box of pins and now I can't get the thing open again okay there we go so it helps if you open it from the correct side so I don't want to lose pins over here so I'm just looking to make sure they're not spread out all over my desk but so here is the pinned unit and when you're doing this you want to pin one side sew it press it and then you can pin the other side so you don't want to try to pin both of these at once it won't work <laughs> you need to pin one side and stitch it and press it and then work on the other side so I'm gonna pause for a second and I know that 
you know, I'm going to pause and this is the thing with the camera delay. So I'm going to pause and look for questions. And I don't know if there's going to be questions <laughs> because by the time I look, you know, by the time you hear me say that I'm looking, then you'll push your question and then I'll be moved on to something else. But <laughs> if you do have questions, I hope that you will post them. And so I'm just going to turn here and we'll put this camera back on so you can see my face <laughs> and we'll go around and just look to see if there are questions or anything. So I'm not seeing anything. I don't think I see anything in Facebook, but I will just double check here. So nothing on Facebook. So I'll pop over to the video here and still no questions here in the in the Facebook group. You guys are super quiet today. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it does look like the video is running about 30 seconds behind, but you guys are super quiet today. So I will just continue. Uh oh, looks like I lost my feed. And well, I'm still I'm still talking. I don't know if it's still recording, but it looks like I lost my connection to the to the stream. So, we'll see. Well, I'll just I'll just keep going. <laughs> we'll just see what happens. So, I'll just keep going and you know, hopefully it will catch back up and get back online. All right. So, let's see if I can make the change over to the sewing machine. So I think, oh, you know what? This camera is not where it's supposed to be. So you hang on. I'm going to go back to, um, let's go back to this view. So what I'm going to do is I have to move this camera because this camera is actually not in the right place. So I'm going to just take a second to move it, but I don't want you guys to freak out <laughs> by the camera moving around. So I actually have to get this oriented so that it is looking at the right place. And I want it to show the sewing that I'm doing, but I have to actually position it to where it will, it actually gives you a good view of what I am doing. And so I don't know what that, I don't know where that position is quite yet, but we'll see if we can't encourage it to be in the right place. And so it, you don't want it to be too super close. So let's see what this view looks like. All right, so this is once again, you know, after this, I need to go and find my, well, actually my seam guide will not help me. So it's gonna say I need a seam guide for uh, the, for this, but the seam guide actually wouldn't help because the seam guides for the feather weights are actually too, um, I can't use my pins set up in this direction if I have the seam guide going. So let's see. I'm still not super happy with that sewing view. All right. Well, let's try this one. All right. So we'll pop over. And so the way, the position that I have the camera in is uh, you know, kind of positioned on the sewing machine that's over here. And let's see. Okay. Oh, look, Claire joined us. Hi, Claire. So no problem being late. You are just, you know, we're here. We're sewing. <laughs> you know, we're going to attempt to sew anyway. So let me just reposition. And then the, you know, let me try to move this uh, microphone without causing too many problems because when I turn to the machine, you can't hear me in the microphone. Okay, so here we go. All right, now this guy, what I need to do is I don't actually have the quarter inch marked on my seam plate and this particular seam plate does not have the lines etched into it. This is the original stitch plate for my featherweight and it does not have the 
markings. And I do wonder, I thought that I bought a bunch of featherweight accessories and one of them might actually be the seam guide <laughs> that has the markings on it. But this foot does not have the, the, this is actually also not the quarter inch foot. So I'm going to be fudging this a little bit in the sense that I have no idea where my quarter inch mark is on this machine. And that's something that will be important to understand if I have any hope of making this unit <laughs> be accurate at all. So this is more going to be an exercise of, you know, kind of what you can do to, to stitch this um, rather than, um, you know, how this is actually going to work. So the thing about my featherweight is this has a manual presser foot up down. So if you are in that situation, then occasionally you may have to stop sewing, lift the foot and adjust the position of your unit. Okay, so what may need to happen and um, sorry, I'm trying to get the get the camera to focus. So we're here, please. So these autofocus lenses are kind of funny because, you know, it has to. You have to be able to tell it where you want it to focus. And it's like, here, we're here, not back there. Nope, we're here. <laughs> so this is going to be a little bit fuzzy because it is refusing to focus. So um, so I, I'm here and I'm trying to get this up to the needle. And what I like on my modern sewing machine is that it has a when you stop with the needle down, the presser foot lifts slightly. And so it's like having a third hand to help you maneuver. So if you have a sewing machine and it may not do this by default, you may have to go into the settings if it doesn't do this already. But my machine has a setting where if you stop with the needle down, the presser foot lifts slightly to allow you to adjust. On these manual adjustment machines, I have to stop deliberately with the needle down and and your machine may have a needle up down you know where it will do that but not operate the presser foot so lots of you know different things but here with my featherweight I have to purposely stop with the needle down so either by stopping and then manually rotating the hand wheel to get the needle down uh, or just by virtue of you know how I time my presser my pressure on the on the uh, foot down there um, you know, to, you know, the gas, how I drive the gas, you know, it may stop with the needle down. So, uh, so just keep in mind, I have no idea where my quarter inch is and I need to get that taken care of. I should probably write a note, you know, fix your quarter inch on this. I can't use my seam guide because of the, the fact that I've pinned. So if I had a seam guide here, I couldn't have pins because, the, or I'd have to pin in the opposite direction. Um, right. So, um, so a couple of challenges here. All right. So, I'm just gonna start sewing here. And I know some of you might be concerned about, well, how can you stitch um, over pins? You know, I'm not supposed to stitch over pins. And yes, that is a thing where you're not supposed to stitch over pins. And I hear that and I understand it. But in this case, if I want my pieces to stay put, I need to stitch over the pins. Now I'm not stitching the pins themselves. You can kind of hear the little uh, clicks and clacks if I get too close to a pin but you know those are the you know those are the breaks and if I break a needle um, you know that happens uh, sometimes but here's the thing the pins that I use so those glass head pins I know some of you have purchased before I don't have them here with me but they are they are blue and yellow so the glass heads are blue and yellow those are super fine or extra fine pins and what happens with those is if you hit that pin the pin will bend but the needle will not so you know so when you hit the pin the pin is actually the thing that that um gets hurt you know not the not the needle and so i prefer if i'm going to stitch over needles i prefer or stitch over pins i prefer doing it with that because those will when i'm stitching over those they tend to get damaged before my needle or anything else on the machine so all right so you can see actually if i you know i stitched pretty slowly there and so i did not have to deal with uh switching 
or adjusting the, the foot position. But um, what I do know is that my stitches, you know, this is not a quarter inch seam allowance. This is less than a quarter inch seam allowance. And if I wanted to go back and because it's less than a quarter inch seam allowance, I can go back in, you know, and stitch it again. But, you know, this is more illustrative than, um, you know, than, than perfection. I'm just trying to show you how to sew it. Um, but if you go slowly enough, you can sort of adjust the stitching as you go. So uh, without having to lift the foot or stop to adjust. Okay, so I'm gonna pop back over to this camera here. So you can see, here's my stitch line. I stitched over pins. I didn't die, you know, my machine did not have a fit. I did, you did hear a couple of times where there was like a, a little bit of a nick um, in there, but I didn't hit the pin. It just um, kind of grazed it, if you will. So I can take all the pins out now. And here's my, my tip for taking out pins really fast. So if you just kind of fold the, you know, your unit until you can kind of hold it, you can take all the pins out at once. <laughs> So that's how I do my kind of rapid removal of pins. So um, so if you just kind of fold it, fold it up, get all the pins in one place and just grab them. It's easier to do with the, the pins that have heads than the headless ones, but that's still kind of worked out anyway. And then in terms of pressing. So with this unit, I press toward the arch. And that is the way you can kind of see it's naturally the way this piece wants to go. So to get this to lay flat, I'm pressing toward the pressing toward the arch. And when I do that, I don't have to then go in and clip these seams. So what's going to happen is this is going to just love to lay nice and flat. Here, so I don't have the the, the uh, iron turned on, so I can't press this for you with the iron. But I can at least get this close enough to where I can pin the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna just pause for a second and just go in and see if there are questions <laughs> back. Um, and it's funny because even though my streaming says that it is not connected, it does look like the, the stream is getting to the people who need to see it. So let me uh, just, I'm just going to stop for a second, put my happy face on and go back and check Facebook and check the comments to see if there is anything that I need to see. And all right, so I'm not seeing anything in the, in Facebook or, um, or in the chat. So I think we're okay to uh, go back and now pin the other side. So let me find the correct video <laughs> we'll switch over to here all right so once again you know i have this unit and you know you have to pretend that these are pressed well <laughs> and i need to now find the center of my unit and and the way that i do this again this piece has a notch but if you need to actually mark the center you fold it in half you match up those edges you find the center and mark it with a pin. Okay, so there's my center unit marked, the center of my unit marked with a pin, and then you do the same thing with the arch. And again, with this one, I'm just going to finger press and find, you know, that center with my finger pressing. And as long as I can see that, that, uh, that crease, I can match that crease with the pin and you know strangely enough it matches the notches that are on here all right so 
Uh, so once again, the piece, you know, it looks a little bit funny, but you know, we went over why it looks like it has to be this direction. Then I hold the center and I'm going to pre-stretch the bias edge that I'm trying to ease. I'll do that on the other side as well, give it a little bit of a stretch. And now when I match up these corners, you can see that I am matching up to the edge, not of the melon, but to the arch that I previously stitched. Okay, so you're squaring it up with that corner. So it's a little bit easier to see once you, you know, which direction you're, you're actually squaring this up to once you get one of them stitched on. But, so I'm gonna put this pin in about a half inch from the edge and then come back with my pin in the opposite direction to keep that corner square. Okay, so and once again, I'm pinning just a little bit. So this is fun. You know, I have a video out there that's, you know, pinning or piecing curves without pins. And now you're getting a video on how, if I have to <laughs> use pins, how I piece with pins. So, so again, I'm just coming in here to just pin a little bit more toward the center. I just put in a couple of pins just to make it easier to see this easing and where it needs to ease. And now I can put my pin in the center. So I'm just, you know, easing this around. Like I said, when you're pre-stretching that edge, you're getting a little bit of the work done for you to where you're not having to work so hard to do the easing around the side. But it's the arch that you're easing to the melon, not the other way around. So your melon, you want to stay the, the size that it is, and it's your arch that needs to change size. So that's why I like to pre-stretch the arch and make sure that the arch is, you know, is bigger or uh, you know, I've, I've stretched that edge to bring it to the size that it needs to be to go around the melon. So I'm just continuing my pinning efforts. The side needs a couple more pins. So one pin and two pins. And I can hear this, you know, hear pins dropping. I don't like the idea of actually dropping pins on the floor in here because I have kind of a deep pile carpet and I don't like dropping these pins because these are the pins you cannot see, <laughs> you know? They don't have a head on them and uh, they are small enough where they will blend in and the last thing you wanna do is find a pin with your feet. I far prefer to sew places where there is uh, a hard, floor surface, so not carpet. So cork or linoleum or, you know, wood or laminate, you know, whatever it is, I like to have kind of flat surfaces where I can see the pins. Even low pile carpet is okay, but um, I have low pile carpet in some parts of this the studio, in the, in the warehouse section of the studio where my cutting and sewing room, you know, sewing takes place. I have a, a low pile kind of industrial carpet back there. I still would prefer to have a hard surface for pins because they like to get, they like to find soft places to penetrate like feet. <laughs> so um, now when I'm in the studio, I do wear shoes in my studio at the warehouse because the floors underneath are concrete so they're not padded underneath. So I do like to wear shoes in there to kind of do a little bit of shock absorption. Um, at home, I tend to walk around home, com the house completely barefoot or at least with socks because my feet are also also very cold <laughs> most of the time. So I like to walk around with socks here, but at the studio I do wear shoes, except when I'm sewing, I take off my right shoe. And so I tend to, at the studio, wear shoes that I can slip on and off. So I'm more likely to be in Crocs or my slippers 
than anything else <laughs> at the studio. So, um, all right, so I am going to move this and we're gonna stitch the other side. So, whoops, sorry, I should probably switch the camera before I do that, but let me show you. So this is all pinned up. So you can see on the back how the corners are lined up. That corner is nice and square. And then it's also nice and square on the other side. So keeping those square, because what's gonna happen is once this arch gets attached, this should be a six and a half inch unfinished unit. So, so that's what I'm going for. So I want these edges to be square because this is the corner of my block. And if that's not square, it's just going to be a little bit harder to maneuver because you know the way that this melon is set into this block is that it meets when you stitch the final seams that melon is is up in the corner um, of the unit so it's not you know this melon isn't designed to float in the in the block it's right up to the edge so that is how this unit was designed. So I wanna make sure that the squares are nice and corner, because nice and, sorry, I wanna make sure the corners are nice and square, because when I set these in the block, I only have that quarter inch seam allowance to accommodate, okay? So let's, so, oh, finally got some feedback. Thank you, Claire, and looks like Evelyn joined us. Good morning. And uh, so Claire says, I'm still connected, but it keeps buffering. So apologize for the buffering and it's still buffering here, but hopefully um, once this, you know, if the buffering is too intense, once this video publishes, it won't have that buffering um, problem. So it's just feeding the stream. All right, so let's switch over to the machine camera and we'll go ahead and sew this. So here is moving the microphone and let's try not to bump the camera. So sorry if this is, um, you know, kind of giving you a little bit of vertigo. I do have to move the camera enough so I can get my hand in here. All right, so um, once again, putting the um, piece under the needle and it does not like, <laughs> it does not like my pin um, here. So we're going to sew and get under there. So, and then we'll take this pin out. All right, so again, we are fudging <laughs> the quarter inch and I'm just kind of eyeballing where I think the quarter inch actually is. And if you sew slowly enough, you can make these kinds of um, micro adjustments as it sews to get around the curve. So curved piecing to me is, a, you sew a lot more slowly than you do when you're chain piecing. Because if I speed up, I lose control of what I'm doing. And so I don't wanna go so fast that I can't make these kind of tiny adjustments that I need to make to get the seam stitched. All right, great. So that part is done. And I'm just stitching on this little spider here to get that out of the way, awesome. All right, so there is my piece completely stitched. Let's switch over to the other camera and I'll show you. So here is my, you know, sort of quarter inch <laughs> seam allowance, the best that I could eyeball it. And, uh, you know, and I'll repeat that little trick that I did. So, uh, so I am taking out these, these pins that were pinned the opposite direction. And so to take out all of these pins at once, I'm just kind of folding this unit small until I get all the pins in the same place. So there's all my pins in the same place and then I just grab them and yank them out. So, and it just left one pin behind but took out all the other pins. So 
Love that as a fast and furious way to get all of those pins out. So I'm just looking around. Do I have any pins loose? I don't see any loose pins, so I can close up this container. So those are not my favorite pins to use, as I mentioned. They're not my favorite pins to use for, for curves, but they work. And, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe I will switch to these for curve piecing. Um, but uh, um, one thing that I did, you know, that I do notice is that the when I'm stitching with the quarter inch seam allowance, I do tend to like the the seam guide for chain piecing. But when I am piecing curves or piecing where I have pins in, I don't like the guide there because it uh, it gets hung up on the guide, and so. I find myself switching between when I'm piecing curves, I switch to the quarter inch foot that does not have the guide so that I don't have to worry about the pins. And so same thing with my seam, you know, with my seam guide, if you have one that, that either the sticky one that sticks onto the bed of the sewing machine or the one that screws into your stitch plate, you can't have your pins facing that direction because they get caught up on the seam guide. So. And I could do, so the technique for pinning with a serger is, so let's say I had, let me just take these, these two pieces. So, uh, so if I were pinning this, the typical technique for pinning is to pin the outside edge, right? And you take these pins out and this is my stitch direction. So the head of the pin is facing this way. Now on a serger, if we're pinning, we actually pin this direction. And so instead of having on the right side of the needle. And so if you have a seam guide on your sewing machine that is actually, you know, either a metal one or a plastic one that, that hooks onto the stitch bed, then you wanna pin in this direction. 